Good morning, metalheads of the internet, and welcome to a brand new episode of The Metal Meltdown, and our first Albums I Missed video of 2022. For realsies this time, by the way. January is almost always a pretty slow month for new metal releases, but January 2022 surprised us right off the bat with some exciting new records from Will to Run, Fit for an Autopsy, Shadow of Intent, Wise Dude, Celeste, Comeback Kid, and many more that we didn't get to talk about. Hence the existence of this very fucking video. So with that in mind, let's not waste any fucking time. Let's dive right into it. Here are all the albums I missed in the month of January. January 2022. First up, we have Dominion, the 11th studio album from Christian rock and metal band Skillet. And it's really fucking bad. I would rather somebody beat me to death with an actual frying pan skillet than ever listen to this album ever again. I'm not exaggerating. In my opinion, Skillet have never made good music. It's always been, like, super edgy, super fucking stupid, but ultimately really harmless, inoffensive, and forgettable. Butt rock, overproduced as fuck, very much in the vein of Godsmack or, like, Three Days Grace or, more appropriately, Trapped. In fact, similarly to Trapped, recently all they really do is get involved in all of these fake fucking controversies, stewing trouble everywhere they go, bitching and moaning because, oh no, not everybody in America is a white Christian. Oh, whatever shall we do? Ah! And honestly, if it wasn't for the fact that Skillet is intentionally kicking up shit everywhere they go, nobody would fucking talk about them because their music is fucking garbage and there's literally nothing else to talk about. If you find yourself in Target or Walmart and you have to pick between buying either this album or an actual frying pan skillet, do yourself a favor, buy the frying pan skillet. Make a, make a bunch of frittatas, make paella, make a big dinner for your family in that delicious fucking skillet. And while you're doing all of this, while you're serving all of this food, do yourself a favor, play some fucking classic hard rock or just anything objectively better. Play Cardi B, because I know for a fact that that would infuriate skillet's fucking pretentious asshole of a lead singer. Next up, we have Ekdysis. I think that's how it's pronounced. I don't actually know. I also kind of don't care. It's from a band called Infected Rain, and it's fine, I guess, whatever. Yeah, there's not much to talk about here. There's not a single hook or melody or lyric that really captured my curiosity or my attention in any fucking capacity. It plays out like a somewhat soulless combination of ideas and influences from the likes of Ginger and very, very, very early in this moment. It's kind of dumb. It's kind of edgy. It's kind of clumsy. Not my cup of tea at all. Next up, we have Blunt Cutters, a brand new studio album from English thrash and comedy metal band Lawnmower Death, who... I'm shocked or even still around, I definitely did not at all expect to be talking about Lawnmower Death in any fucking capacity on the Metal Meltdown. And you know, it's pretty decent. I wasn't really impressed with uh, some of the promo singles that I had heard beforehand, but the full album itself, not bad. Honestly, I mean, it's got lots of gnarly riffs, it's got lots of punchy beats, the jokes are simple and straight to the point, and crude, but not too crude. The album itself is surprisingly quite fluid and cohesive and trim, wrapping up at a really sharp 34-minute runtime. It's definitely very generic, and quite frankly, there are tons of modern bands that are playing this exact style with more enthusiasm, with more vigor, with better jokes and better production, but hey, all things considered, I don't really have anything that horrible to say about this album. It's, it's pretty decent, I guess, like all things considered. Next up, we have Revolt, the international debut from Dimitri. This is a metal band located out of the Czech Republic. Apparently, they're pretty popular there, and now they're trying to stretch their wings and fly across the world. I wish them nothing but the best, but I did not enjoy this album whatsoever. I just think it's really corny, really poorly produced, and a combination of everything I really don't like about so much mainstream heavy metal, like... 
the worst elements of Slipknot and Five Finger Death Punch and Hell Yeah kind of combined into one really stupid clusterfuck. They must be doing something right because they've been kicking around in the Czech Republic for many, many, many fucking years now. And again, I really do wish them the best of luck in trying to uh, spread their wings across the planet, but this ain't doing anything for me. They're, they're definitely gonna have to switch things up if they wanna impress me going forward. Next up, we have Night Parade of 100 Demons, a brand new studio album from American psychedelic and stoner metal band Earthless. Similar to records like Black Heaven and From the Ashes, it is filled with hefty, high concept, long-winded jams, a lot of guitar licks, a lot of weird soundscapes, a lot of rhythmic changes and weird patterns. It's massive, it's big, it's epic, it's weird and spacey as fuck, and I... Fucking love it. It's not really doing anything all that new or special or unique for the realms of stoner and psychedelic and experimental and progressive music, but you know what? I don't fucking care. The production is crisp as fuck. The performances are unfucking real. The songwriting is really inventive, really clever, constantly shocking you with all these different twists and turns, all these different soundscapes and melodies and harmonies. It's just a wild, classic, psychedelic stoner metal roller coaster. Do yourself a fucking favor, get yourself some edibles or some nice fucking kush, sit down with like a lava lamp and just tune the fuck out with this record. You will not regret it, I promise you. Next up, we have Crystalline Exhaustion, a brand new studio album from Kralis. I was hoping to talk about this in a full-blown album review, but with so many exciting tunes on the way from Venom Prison and Rolo Tomasi and Zeal and Ardor and Napalm Death and Voivod and so many more, there's just no fucking time. No disrespect to Colin Marston and the rest of the Kralis gang, y'all are some of the most underappreciated and talented folks within the realms of modern extreme music, but there just wasn't any time. Thank God, though, I have this fun thing called Albums I Missed, where I can talk about albums that I missed that I didn't get to talk about before. So now, here we are. Yeah, that's a good thing. Building on the success of their previous studio album, Demonic Wealth, Kralis is playing around with a lot of very minimalist and spacey and atmospheric black metal. There are a lot of synthesizers, a lot of cold, elongated sections. It's very grim, it's very frosty, very reminiscent of, like, Enslaved and a lot of other classic black metal, but with the cosmic flourishes I would expect of Kralis or even a band like Blood Incantation at this point. It's very weird, very creepy, and very immersive as a result. Maybe a little too long for its own good. There's definitely some fat that could be trimmed and removed from this juicy black metal steak, but it is nonetheless a juicy black metal steak. If you loved last year's Demonic Wealth, if you love atmospheric black metal, if you love Kralis, definitely check this fucking thing out ASAP. Next up, we have Ritual Hymns from Worm Shepherd. Some of you may remember that for a brief period on the Metal Meltdown, we were talking exclusively about deathcore. And this is because the likes of Shadow of Intent, Fit for an Autopsy, and Enterprise Earth all released brand new music the same fucking weekend. As a result, something like Worm Shepherd, as exciting and as gnarly as it is, was kind of forgotten. By me, at least. Not by all of you. In fact, quite a few of you bugged me about this album quite relentlessly. And I'm happy you did, because this shit fucking rocks. Epic, brutal, in-your-face, blackened deathcore and death metal, pummeling beatdowns, some great orchestral arrangements, some great vocal performances. It's got the hellish size and scale that I've come to expect from a band like, say, Behemoth, but with the enthusiasm, the anger, and the momentum of modern deathcore. I would argue it loses just a little bit of its steam and luster near the very end, but all things considered, what Worm Shepherd have accomplished here is pretty fucking brutal. 
Next up, we have an Outlaws stand from Nocturnal Graves. Now, this was released at the very beginning of the month when things were still pretty slow, and I made a decision that I was either going to talk about this album or the Way Age Dude album, because I didn't really feel like talking about that much black metal in one period of time, especially with the aforementioned Deathcore Weekend 2022 fastly approaching. And I ended up choosing We Age Dude because, as repetitive as it is, it had great production value, it's had some truly sick and demented and twisted riffs, whereas this, by comparison, was flat, stale, totally unremarkable, totally forget it, just the most generic, run-of-the-mill black metal imaginable, with no spark, no anything, really. I mean, it's just so fucking lame. There's no other word for it. There's nothing on this album that you haven't heard done objectively better hundreds if not thousands of other times by hundreds if not thousands of other black metal bands. The production is completely, totally soulless, way too clean for its own good, and the album leaves zero impact whatsoever as a result of all of this. If you are truly, absolutely starving for some new black metal, maybe this will suffice, but to everyone else out there, We Age Dude. Just go listen to We Age Dude. There's a reason I reviewed that instead. It's a way more interesting record. Next up, we have Volumes of Vomit, the sophomore studio album from American slam and brutal death metal crew, Party Cannon. Look, y'all know me. You know I don't like slam or brutal death metal, and you also know that I'm not going to give a band a pass simply because their record is self-aware and satirical and sillier than your average X-metal band. Cough, cough, Limp Bizkit still sucks. Y'all need to stop pretending that it's amazing just because Fred Durst admitted how fucking corny he is. Woo! I got a gnarly fucking cold there. I should go see a doctor. Which is why what I'm about to say is going to be genuinely fucking shocking. Brace yourself. Volumes of Vomit from Party Cannon is actually really fucking fun. I mean, it's not like amazing. It's not an album of the year contender. I'm not going to buy it on vinyl or anything like that. But you know what? I, I had fun listening to it. Fucking shoot me, all right? It was kind of fun. I mean, for one, it is just so disgustingly over the top, brutal, nasty, gross, ech but in the best way possible. The chaotic, frenzied, violent nature of the album reminds me a lot of early Carcass and Dying Fetus and Cattle Decapitation, which I have a very soft spot for. I love the production of this whole thing. It is so crisp, so dense, so muscular, so transparent. There are some really great guest spots for members of Waking the Cadaver and Exhumed across the record. It actually has a pretty decent sense of humor. Like, I was legitimately caught off guard by tracks like I Believe in Danny Filth and Tactical Chunder. Much like Sanguisugabog, it's extremely dumb and extremely self-aware, but unlike Sanguisugabog, it's also very, very well produced and performed and genuinely a little clever at times. So yeah, Volumes of Vomit, surprisingly, a pretty fucking good album. Was not expecting that at all. Bravo, Party Cannon. Fucking bravo. Next up, we have Revenge at All Costs, a brand new studio album from the controversial Iranian heavy metal band Confess. I won't dive into exactly what that controversy is because I don't really have the political expertise and knowledge to properly describe the situation. The simplest and quickest way I can describe it is Iran is a dangerous fucking place to be a heavy metal band. It's a dangerous place in general, but especially if you're a heavy metal band, and we will leave it at that. As far as the album itself is concerned, what we're dealing with is some very straightforward but very aggressive groove and thrash metal. These guys have been very quietly working on this album for some time while dealing with a lot of different legal and political obstacles. Uh, the result is an album that is very impatient, very bloodthirsty. They are very inspired by Lamb of God, Slayer, Devil Driver, Chimera, Sepultura, and you can definitely hear all of those influences. 
it's not an especially clever album. In fact, I don't think it's unfair at all to say that it's actually quite one-dimensional and predictable. But credit where it's due, it is, despite that, still pretty entertaining. I mean, the anger is so authentic and so in-your-face that it's kind of hard not to be swept up in it. So I would say that if you are looking for a more straightforward, just kind of metal album, this is probably it. It's not going to win any awards, but, you know, it, it's got a few gnarly tunes. It's uh, It definitely won't disappoint if you're just looking for some spicy meat and potatoes metal tunery. Next up, we have Relics of the Dead from Druid Lord. Quite a few people have asked me about this album as well, both on YouTube and on Discord and privately on Instagram. Clearly, y'all are really, really enjoying this. Good for you. Me, personally, I just think it's okay. I mean, it's heavy as holy fucking hell. The production value, the sound mix, super dark, super evil. I love how raw and shadowy and mysterious it is. And I also love how, you know, a lot of guitar licks and harmonies and solos will just sizzle in the forefront of the sound. But as far as the songwriting is concerned, I found this to be an incredibly derivative and uninspired affair. It just never really shocked or wowed me. And I found myself not really being bored, but definitely tuning out of the record as it continued. Not at all looking forward to reading the comments in response to that one, because a lot of y'all seem to really like this album, so yeah, might have just pissed a few people off. Sorry. Hopefully, though, this next one will redeem me, because we have another underground release that a lot of y'all have been telling me about. It's The Cosmic Cauldron from Needless, a hefty, bulky, super tight collection of technical and progressive death and thrash metal, a lot of gnarly riffs, some great compositions, great arrangements. I'm reminded of, like, Modern Day Creator and some Black Dahlia Murder stuff and Vector and Revocation all kind of thrown into a blender. It's an album that's equal parts heavy and genuinely intelligent to the point where I feel like it could appeal to a pretty wide audience of people, like anyone looking for like some artsy-fartsy, high-concept tech def or prog def would probably find a lot to appreciate from this. But anyone just looking to crack open some fucking beer and punch something? Hell yeah! You'll probably love this too. I do think it's pretty bulky and a little bit too long for its own good, but all things considered, a pretty stellar fucking display. I mean, goddamn. And finally, this brings us to The Magic of Wind, Fire, Steel. Brand new album from Power Paladin. Some of you may remember earlier in the month, I finally opened my heart and my mind to some power metal reviewing the new Battle Beast album right here on the channel. I enjoyed it, and then a lot of people in the comments suggested, hey, if you liked Battle Beast, why not give Power Paladin a try? They got a brand new album, it's all the fucking rage, why not give it a shot? So I said, yeah, that's a pretty good idea, and... Yeah. Yeah. All right, the good news. Um, I can definitely see why power metal fans love this. It's very over the top. The performances are fucking great. The production is really good. Very reminiscent of both American and European power metal from the 80s and into the early 90s. It's also a little bit more grandiose in the vein of something like Rhapsody of Fire or Nightwish. Um, you know, it's also got a little bit of like a classic heavy metal, speed metal underbelly to it. There's parts of this that... I could absolutely expect to see on a White Wizard record or a Holy Grail record. With that in mind, the guitar work and the vocal work I think is pretty great on this. Uh, the bad news is I think that it's just really, really, really fucking silly to the point of being kind of cringy. The synthesizer and keyboard stuff in particular is not doing a fucking thing for me. And as the album progressed and continued to indulge in pure power metal cheese, I, I just found myself turned off more and more by the album. So yeah, definitely not the reaction I think some of you were hoping for, but c'est la vie, I'm still happy I gave it a shot. Uh, I think there's a lot of potential for Power Paladin to build upon. There is a lot of good stuff on this record that, in theory, I could return to if it weren't for certain things. Who knows? Maybe the next album will be a little bit more mature, a little bit more refined, and if not, well, whatever. Agree to disagree. Power Metal ain't normally my thing anyway, so... 
fuck it. I gave it a shot. That's what y'all asked for, and that's what I gave it. All right, I think we're done here. And those, ladies and gentlemen, were all of the albums I feel that I missed in January 2022. Now, the question remains, what do you think I missed in January 2002? What other albums do we need to talk about? What other albums should I, at the very least, dedicate some time to? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, press subscribe right here for updates on the Metal Meltdown -y fuck immediately. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, you have yourself a fantastic fucking day.